Hello, hello, hello. Beast egg, how's it going? I know that uh, probably everybody's over at Jimmy's right now. Um, I know that he just got in a shipment, so I promised you all that I would bring you a live unboxing. So we'll give it a few more minutes. Uh, finally, just got it. Um, just uh, about five minutes ago, uh, was just delivered. So typically, most of my shipments don't be shipped this late because it's four thirty. Eastern time in the p.m. So oftentimes and I'll go more into receiving and shipping and stuff like that a little bit later on um, in this uh, live stream, but We'll give it a few more minutes um, I'm anxious just as you guys are I'm not gonna wait too much longer though because it's already been in shipment for a few days now so I don't mind waiting five ten minutes, but um it, they'll have to go back and watch it later on. So, hope you guys are doing well. Um, looks like we only have six in here right now. Um, so, Raymond, Nick, Beastag, hello. Um, again, yeah. I was hoping it would come earlier today so I could have jumped on here, but it is what it is. So any general questions that you guys might have uh, for me, I'll go ahead and, and do that here for the next few minutes, and then I'm going to go ahead and get to the unboxing. So I did share this in the, uh, the live stream um, information page there on Facebook as well as the Sergeant Tank. So feel free to go ahead, like, share, dislike um, here on YouTube. So... Uh, a like and a dislike are equal in the YouTube world. So as long as you guys like the content, feel free to smash that like button. And if you don't like it, feel free to smash this like button. Um, go ahead and share it uh, on your, on your, uh, oh, come on. Any of your social media platforms, I do not mind whatsoever. And with that being said, we'll give it a few minutes here and then go ahead and get to the the unboxing so Uh, let me know if you guys did get a notification. Um, so v -Stag, Nick, Raymond, if you're still here, um, just let me know if it uh, notified you that this channel was going live. Um, I just wanted to see how it's showing up on your guys' end. see if I can uh, yeah I'm gonna change here a second kind of expand so bear with me not lose you guys uh, let's see here let's try the full canvas fix that uh, Let's try to fix this a little bit here. Come on. 
Bom. All right, Raymond said he didn't get it today, but he usually does. Okay. Um, just bear with me. I'm going to make sure that it was listed as public and not private. So if I lose you, I will be back. Uh, live control room. Info and settings. It said as public, so I'm not sure. Um, yeah, not sure why that is. Yeah, everything looks good on my end, as what I normally do. Um, so I'm not not sure. All right, going back to OBS. Big J, what's up, man? Sorry to hear about uh, sorry to hear about your fish, man. I know that's definitely a uh, hard pill to swallow for sure. So uh, we've all been there, and it's not any fun. But I appreciate you uh, you jumping on here and listening. I think that's better for you. I know for me, dealing with emotional issues and so forth. It's good to interact and kind of get your mind off from it for a little bit. So I'm only going to wait a couple more minutes, you guys. I know that Jimmy is doing uh, some unboxing and stuff over there. But I promised you all I would bring you live. So for the folks that are listening to this, um, uh, after it's uploaded, uh, I guess just stay tuned to the end um so if you have uh i'll take a couple of questions so anybody that might have any general questions for me before i get to the unboxing we only have six in here right now um you know i'm not going to wait too much longer because it's already been uh delayed enough and i want to get the fish into their homes as soon as i can so um doesn't look like we've really had anybody else join um uh, Big J, Vstag, Nick, if you guys are still in here, let me know if you guys received a notification that I was going live. Uh, Raymond did not receive a notification. And if you guys didn't receive a notification, then I'm going to restart this to make sure that everybody's notified. Because I've had this happen now a few times uh, where individuals aren't being notified for whatever reason. And when I went in to refresh, and restart the stream, uh, then it seemed at that point everybody uh, that wasn't notified then was. So that would be an awesome help if you guys can just let me know. Yay or nay on that. All right, Vista got it. All right, so notification must have went out. Majority are probably over at Jimmy's. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get to it. You know, um, I let everybody know ahead of time it was going to be an impromptu thing because I didn't know exactly when I was going to be getting the shipment. I was hoping it would have been earlier today. 
um because i typically don't like coming on here at this time to do live streams um but it is what it is so we'll make it work one way or another so let's go ahead and get to it and not going to be paying a whole lot of attention to chat um just going to be talking as i'm opening i'm going to reposition the camera so bear with me and stay until the end all you guys questions from there uh so enjoy Okay, so you can see on here it says fragile. Um, again, most of you guys have been following me long enough. Um, it does say open immediately on it. One recommendation I always have, again, I'm here to try to provide some constructive criticism. Um, you always want to put on your boxes live fish. Specify, I'm not sure why people would hold that information. Um, you know, uh, as far as what I'm receiving, there's nothing against any prohibitations as far as what livestock is in here. So I think oftentimes people may be nervous um, to indicate that there's livestock if they're trying to withhold information. However, if you're doing the right thing, you should never have to worry about that anyway. But being the fact that what's in here, there is no limitations on it or restrictions or laws against this particular livestock. But um, overall, um, not sure exactly what's going to be on the inside here. Um, so I hope that everything is well um, and packaged appropriately. But uh, the first thing I can identify with this particular package is it does not indicate livestock on here whatsoever. Um, and again, you always want to do that redundancy all the way around the top, the bottom, um, and so forth. Because what, what happens is people, you know, people oftentimes... Uh, make fun of, I'm not saying just me, um, but make fun of people when they go above and beyond with tape and stuff like that. But it's it's funny at that moment until something happens, especially if you're the one that's providing the livestock. It's one thing, because I've had livestock that has shown up, unfortunately, deceased and, and so forth, but knock on wood, uh, I haven't had any issues because I definitely go above and beyond and I lose a ton of cost when I ship. So um, I would rather my reputation um, when it comes to fish and shipping because from a business standpoint, you're not really making anything on livestock unless you're like a wholesaler, like a fish farm breeding on large, large, massive scales. And that would be my dream someday. Obviously, you guys have been following me long enough. That's ultimately my my passion and end where I can start providing things, more importation, exportation, and stuff like that. But there's a lot of licensing and so forth that goes into something like that. And with that being said, I mean, obviously, um, you know, fragile, uh, perishable. But again, uh, you know, handle with care. None of this matters because it was already covered up. Um, but again, a perishable could be a number of different things. It doesn't mean that's necessarily livestock. So you want to make sure you indicate livestock. Even if you're, even if you're selling live plants, put on there live plants. Um, and then the post office will be a little bit more attentive to what's going on. It doesn't mean it's just a preventative measure. You can't ever guarantee um, again, which carrier and so forth. I mean, with this particular shipment, I know if I would have had my normal route carrier, um, it would have been here a lot sooner. But again, each carrier is different if they're new to the route, so on and so forth. But with that being said, um, so far, everything is intact. So besides that one point uh, that I just went ahead and, and mentioned, um, you know, everything as far as the overall handling, you can tell that there's no direct damage to the box. Um, I can tell by looking at it, it looks like there's in, it's insulated, which is uh, definitely a plus. Um, seems to be taped okay. Um, again, I shared this before. Use a sharp knife. You don't want to ever cut towards you. So again, safety first. But have the blade and the knife up and then cut away. 
just like you're cleaning a deer or an animal or something like that. Um, the same concept. So, and then if you have a sharp enough knife, you can kind of pull out because it, it's a pet peeve of mine when I see people just ripping through it because you don't know how far that could penetrate down. You don't know the thickness of the insulation and so forth that's in there. So just some common sense, some common judgment that needs to be made, um, you know, when you're doing that. So um, I already know right now this particular, it's probably going to be, yep, foil bottom. So I've utilized the same stuff before. Um, this is a good good insulation, um, well insulated in the inside too, uh, appropriate lining around, uh, utilize a newspaper, um, and so forth. Um, before I do anything else, um, I'm not even going to pull these guys out yet. A lot of people get too impatient um, and too excited. I guess maybe my excitement level, um, just because I've been in the hobby for so many years, it's not like I'm jumping up and down um, for joy. You know, it's definitely an exciting moment, but again, I think you get too excited, then you start overthinking things. Um, so it's 70, which isn't bad, 71. I'm comfortable with that. Um, I haven't seen or felt a does feel like there's a heat pack, which is still warm, so that's good. Um, so let's see what we got going on here. Yeah. These, again, are going to be your mycogeophagus. I'll show you guys once I get them acclimated into the tank. Um, so if you want to find out more, chime back in later. It doesn't matter. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, again... These are going to be your cordon breather bags. Um, again, you guys know my thoughts on breather bags um, and so forth. But uh, as long as the fish are healthy, it doesn't matter to me in the end. Um, as long as there's no leakage in the bags. So as far as any DOAs, um, everything looks fine. Um, coloration is okay, but again, these guys are still juveniles yet. They're not even, I would classify as sub-adults. And if I try to hold these up closer to the camera, you're not even going to be able to see. So we'll wait until I get these guys acclimated to the tank, and then I can go ahead and show you uh, from that standpoint. So the other thing is here, uh, there should be eight of them total. So uh, there is one that's deceased. Um, so I'm not going to be playing around um, as far as drip acclimating. So it's unfortunate. Looks like a female there. Um, is actually deceased, so I know the ammonia levels are going to be sky high. And the reason that is, um, is the fact that there's four of them in a bag like this. Um, so I, I'm going to have to get in contact with the seller um, so we can work something out. Um, typically, as a breeder, and another recommendation I can advise anybody of is always add one or two extra. Um, it's going to save you costs in the end, and it builds good reputations with your uh, customer base. So anytime I ship livestock, I always include one or two extra. Um, so bear with me, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and get these guys out, check the ammonia levels, um, get these guys in the, from this bag. As um, soon as I open that bag, the ammonia level is going to go through the roof uh, even more so. So just stay tuned. Uh, hang out. I'll keep talking as I work here, but wasn't anticipating that. So that's all joys of fish keeping. And another thing here to keep in mind too, you guys, um, before I even move any further, I need to contact the, need to find out what the uh, DOA policy is before I open the bag. Some of them require you to 
um, take a photograph before the bag is open and so forth. So bear with me a second. Um, again, this is always the, this is what I like. This is why I'm different. Uh, in that sense, I'm all about going on the fly is I don't rehearse anything. This is real life. Um, you guys are seeing as I see it, you're seeing exactly how I react to a situation, which I think is good, especially if somebody is nervous or concerned about, um, you know, receiving fish or shipping fish, you know. Just bear with me. Uh, I got to find out the seller here. And... See what their policies are. All right. Priority guarantee. Priority shipping is a default shipping method for this listing. In rare case of the DOA, the buyer must send me at least three clear pictures of the dead fish in the unopened bag within two hours of the first delivery attempt. I will replace only the fish. Unfortunately, shipping is not refundable. And you'll need to pay for shipping. So with that being said, you guys, by the time I pay for shipping, astronomical prices for the shipping, just from a business standpoint, it's always good to inform uh, the seller and stuff happens. I mean, the shipping I paid was basically more than the fish himself. So, um, you know, I went based on reputation and so forth. I'm not going to mention who the seller is because I'm not one to, you know, this could have been the very first situation anything like this has happened and I'm not there to try to uh, try to potentially jeopardize anybody's information, let alone confidentiality and so forth and bring this to you guys uh, publicly and corporately here on YouTube. So out of respect, um, I am not, if it's somebody asked me, I'm not going to mention uh, who the, who the seller is, but with that being said, you know, I still have a couple hours yet. So plenty of time just so they know, out of uh, pure knowledge and so forth, I uh, will go ahead and take some pictures here before I open the bag and provide that. Um, I mean, if we can work something out, um, then I'll go ahead and, uh, and you know, pay for the shipping. But by the time I pay for a single specimen uh, based on that size and so forth, um, you know, I'm here to try to teach people. Maybe I can offer some insight and so forth. Who knows? But uh yeah, things things happen, um, but I'm gonna stop talking, get some photographs here. So I guess just hang out. Uh, you can keep chiming back in if you want to. Listen in the background. I'll keep trying to keep the conversation going. Again, I'm not paying attention to chat. I'm focused on the livestock. That's my biggest concern right now. So concern the fact, like I said, there is one that's deceased, and I need to take some photographs before I open the bag. All right. And I've had this question before too, um, and it's not difficult to do. I'm not gonna go into it right now, but uh, from the standpoint of putting seals on bags, because I've done that before, you can actually seal the bag so then that way you know somebody didn't potentially try to manipulate the bag. There's a very simple way to do that. Um, and that way, uh, you know, from that standpoint. Got to see. Got to make sure I have the right bag here. There's just no way the way that they're even bagged. Um, can't even get a good picture of it. It is what it is. Like I said, chances are I'm not even going to press the issue. Um, you know, I'm more concerned about getting these guys out of the bag than I am about taking pictures. So 
if it voids the warranty, like I said, it doesn't matter based on the warranty policy anyway. Um, I'm done dinking around, I guess, at this point. Now, if I can probably get it now through, see, yeah, don't, uh, I mean, I can tell right now there's a lot of issues in what I see in the way, um, the way they're, they're packaged. I mean, if you're going to use breather bags, don't be double bagging it. Um, let alone the, the other one. Okay. They both are breather bags. Yeah. Don't do that. Um, that's why I don't, I don't like breather bags. So, all right. So I am able to get a picture after all. So bear with me a second. Bring this back by the light. So there's the pictures. I'm done with that. So again, you guys, if anybody that's been listening since the start here, you're going to have to help me out as far as answering questions because I'm not even paying attention to chat. Um, I just need to get these guys out of the bag. Um, the ammonia levels are going to be ridiculous. These are not cheap fish. Yeah, I can smell the ammonia. <clears throat> now what I'm doing is grabbing my magnifying glass, seeing if I can... Uh, um, identify any direct, indirect disease here, parasites, so forth. Like I said, I'm doing one bag at a time right now. Um, this one I'm not even worrying about temperature acclimating at this point because of the deceased fish. So I'm going to get that, that one out of there. Um. Yeah, this one has pretty bad ammonia burn. Um, and also I can tell there's a temperature fluctuation there just by looking at the color of the deceased um, in the eyes. Bear with me just a second, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and acclimate temperature-wise utilizing this container. Then I'll get to uh, the other, other bag.
So you guys, anybody still watching, got the mycogeophagus germ blue ram cichlids. I'm just treating for a disease right now. Um, and same bag of which I lost the one, you can tell a major ammonia burn. Um, so forth. Yeah, they all have pretty bad ammonia burn. Doesn't surprise me. All right, so hopefully we don't have the same issues. 
Again, I have two different tanks here. So we'll see. These other guys that go in the other tank. No, no identified losses in this tank. However, they don't look like they're doing the greatest. Um, so I take that back. What I said earlier, there is no heat pack in here. Um, again, with German blues, I'm assuming the temperature, what these guys came from, is probably in the mid 80s. So um, I have a very good idea of why there was losses in the first place. Um, and, you know, All right, so what I'm gonna do is get this other group. Again, being in the breather bag, I'm not messing around. Um, you know, I showed you guys with the uh, um, with the blue dream shrimp, how I uh, utilize um, a two liter bottle bottle to acclimate with uh, breather bags. Um, but again, considering the fact these guys are obviously uh, stressed out, um, not going to be not going to be messing around with that. So I just want to get these guys out so I can look at them better and go from there. There wasn't too much defecation in the bag, so that's a plus. So that tells me at least they detox prior to shipping. Because if that wasn't the case, probably wouldn't be any survival. So overall, TDS and pH are pretty much in equal balance. That's only a baseline. That's not not going to be accurate. I can guarantee you that due to the fact of during shipment, it's just all overall idea we introduce something that you've just received because essentially this is the current water parameters that they're in due to the fact that uh during shipment um so based on that it's good from that standpoint because things do match uh from that point of view So these guys have really bad ammonia burn too. Um, so far, I'll be cautiously optimistic of the outcome. Um, again, this is just a prime example of why I'm so anal when it comes to shipping. Um, it's just a big pet peeve of mine. And nothing bothers me more if you know, let alone the fact of cost, but, uh, you know,
So I'm going to go ahead and treat the other tank as well. Um, so, joys of fish keeping. So what I'm doing right now, you're not going to be able to see it too well. I'm actually utilizing my hand. Um, and then, of course, I'll be washing before I uh, introduce the other two that made it um, into the other tank, the first one here. What I'm doing is just cupping my hand. I'm holding these guys to look and see um, what their gill plates are doing, what their fins are doing. And I'll watch them here for a minute or so before I release them into... Um, so essentially, I'm doing a plop and drop is what I'm doing. I'm not going to worry about any other form of acclimation. The main thing is you just want to get these guys out of that increase of ammonia and get them into a, um, a well-established environment. So there's multiple methods I utilize, and for these guys, this is the one I'm using. So. Least amount of stress as possible, doing it that way as well. So they're just tossing them in there, you know, from a net. I'm going to go wash my hands, get the other two into their tank. So I appreciate you guys hanging out. I will get to the chat here in just a few minutes. It's not the way I wanted to do this, but as all you guys are aware, the most important thing is the health of your fish and not worry about a live stream. So the first, uh, you know, 24 hours is going to be the most critical. Um, like I said, I'm cautiously optimistic um, for the outcome of these guys, um, especially the uh, the one over here in the, the right tank, <laughs> which is probably the, the left to you guys. Um, really bad ammonia burn on all of these guys. Um, have ick on, uh, on these guys as well, so... And then um, I'll be obtaining some. I'm out of Epsom salt, but as you guys, I will show you how to do that. I would have actually done an Epsom salt dip because, again, I do practice what I preach. And, unfortunately, I am out of Epsom salt. So I'm going to give it about 24 hours tomorrow morning, something like that. And I'll go ahead and, obviously, I'll be observing them uh, very, very much so. Uh, over the next day or two, but I'll base it on what their overall health is looking like come, you know, tomorrow morning. If I'm going to end up doing the Epsom salt dip, and if I do, then I'll go ahead and bring you guys um, through that process and how I go about doing it and the reasons why I do it. It's easier to show rather than just, you know, explain, so that's why I like to walk the walk, not just talk it. Um...
the first one is doing really good that I put in. Um, overall, field plates are looking a lot better. The breathing is stabilized. Um, I've done a lot of different stuff through the years. Some stuff that most would think probably a little unorthodox, but it works if you do it right. I've actually sedated um, fish and brought them back. But unfortunately, that first one is way too far gone. It's already been dead probably, I would imagine, for at least a day by looking at the coloration on it. I've called it different things, but kind of give them a little shock is what you would say. It's like if you go up behind somebody in pitch black dark and you go boom like that to the back of them, you're going to startle them. And that's essentially the concept, the easiest way I can explain it. When you're trying to bring a fish back to life that's in that sense too far gone is I'm essentially shocking them. It's almost like if you guys, like, um, um, if you have, like, a, a rhythmic heart issues and stuff like that, and, you know, if you go in and they shock your heart, in a sense, to get it back on rhythm, maybe that's a better way to look at it. Uh, that's what I do sometimes in, in a last case resort. You know, I just don't resort to that. These guys aren't to that point. Um, if the other one would have came in, and it's a great training tool, so again, I don't want, ever want to wish anything like that happens, um, but in that event, that's where good tutorial and stuff comes in, in, in my opinion. That's the kind of stuff I want to bring to you guys, the, the real world, real life. All right, I'm going to rinse my hands here, and I'll get the chat. Keep an eye on these guys. I'm going to sterilize my equipment here real quick, and then I'll be right with you guys. Take any questions you have, hang out with you. I hope for a better, uh, better unboxing, but hey, that's what unboxings are all about. So this is just an OCD thing. I like to keep all my stuff clean and get stuff put away so I'm not losing stuff and all that jazz. So as you guys can probably tell, I definitely have a lot of passion to try to help fish. It doesn't matter. I mean, I don't look at just the cost of it. Nobody wants to see anything suffer or whatever. Definitely have done some things that have amazed me, but maybe I just understand more because all my health issues, I don't know. But I just got a lot of passion for fish disease and treatment. Probably because I've dealt a lot with it, especially with some of the more uh, tougher cichlids, I guess you would say. Just because they're so, they can't handle, you know, big fluctuations in that of things I've kept through the years. But I've always been that individual that definitely likes, um, likes challenging stuff. I've always challenged myself all through my entire life. 
Um, obviously, what I've been going through now the last few years has definitely been a challenge uh, I'd rather not have, but um, that's just part of life. So, get this stuff out of the way. Almost back with you guys. They're eating, so that's good. Just microorganisms and stuff right now. Uh, I definitely miss um, miss my German Blue Rams. I had really, really nice ones. Um, years back when I used to breed a ton of these guys. Used to line breed and all that. Yeah, both of these, both of these tanks um, from both different different um, uh, packages had pretty bad hit on on both of them. But I'll show with you guys. I'll share with you what I use for hit treatment that I find uh, less stressful than other products I've utilized. Coloration isn't too bad, uh, especially on the males. But it's always up to the fish. Can they fight through it? Keep an eye on this one here in the this tank. Definitely not looking to drain this. Well. Anyway, back to the coffee. Fix the camera here for you guys. So, appreciate you guys hanging out. It's been about an hour. Um, just kind of watching me there for a little bit. Um, so anybody just chiming in, this will be uploaded afterwards so you can go back. Um, go back and watch it. But yeah, so again, these are the, uh, I'll put all the, I, again, I was just trying to get, uh, get the live stream out for you guys so you would know when I was going to be coming live. Um, I know that Sashimi, Jimmy, uh, it looks like still might be live. So by all means, you can bounce back and forth. Um, I just promised you guys that I would bring you a live unboxing, so that's what I wanted to do. Um, let me turn that light off behind me because I can tell it's probably quite annoying. If it's bothering me, it's got to be bothering you guys. All right. <sighs> 
Okay, so Sashimi is here. Um, Jimmy, by all means, man, yeah. If you're still streaming, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, you don't don't have to leave for me by any means because this is going to be uploaded anyway. So what I'm going to do is just scroll back up to the chat, quick go through, um, say looks like a lot of hellos. If I miss anybody, I apologize. I'm going to look and see if there's any direct questions for me. Um, if there's not, then I'll just go ahead and scroll right to the bottom. So... Oh, Jimmy was done a while ago. Was asking for me in the stream. Laugh out loud. All right. So, Fishner, Fox, Raymond, um, Kristen, Beastag, Ken Lee. Not sure how many of you guys are still here, but the Amphibian, Big J, Beast, all right, uh, Nick. All right. So, it looks like I'm down here to the bottom of the chat again the fish i did receive just a quick recap i'm not going to go into all the details as far as the unboxing you're going to have to go back and watch it um but uh i'm going to keep looking over at them quite a bit throughout the live stream just uh because i'm monitoring uh, a lot of ammonia burn uh, a lot of issues as far as their overall breathing and so forth so the way that they were packaged and shipped um i can tell it's not to my standards but again um, it is what it is. Uh, the most important thing is just trying to provide uh, the overall best environment for the fish. And ultimately, at the end of the day, it's up to them if they want to make it. So it's no different than a human being. You, you can either fight or sometimes you just can't, you know. So um, I'm being cautiously optimistic at this point. Um, I'm treating them all for uh, ick, um, as all eight of them do have ick. Um, the breathing came down um, in this first tank here, uh, which would be, uh, trying to think, uh, maybe to the left for you guys. Um, the one I'm pointing at, there's quite a bit of a delay on my end. So um, these guys are doing okay. The one next to it uh, is the one I'm most concerned about. Um, if there's any issues at all, it's probably uh, going to be the tank next to it. Um, the breathing has gone down quite a bit uh, in this tank. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, they're all alive right now. But again, uh, the first 24 hours is going to be the most critical. And if I had some Epsom salt on hand, I would have just went ahead and did an Epsom salt dip, and I would have brought you guys along with that process and how I go about doing it. And again, for anybody just chiming in, um, the analogy I would use is if you have like a ryth rhythmic issues with your heart and you go in, uh, like if you have AFib or something like that, you go in, you know, oftentimes they can shock your heart back into the appropriate rhythm. And I've done that before where I've been fortunate enough to actually bring fish back to life. That one that I did lost, I can tell you right now by looking at it um, in the coloration and everything uh, in the lineage on it that uh, it's probably been deceased for about a, um, a day or so. So it's surprising to the fact that the other ones weren't affected by that, uh, considering the fact that there was a little bit of a delay in shipment um, with these guys. Uh, there was no heat pack in it even though it came from the East Coast, but we're still at those temperatures right now where they do dip down to the 30s. Um, I would always advise have a heat pack, um, especially with uh, mycogeophagus, because I'm assuming without being there and testing the water parameters myself, um, the source, first time getting them from this source, I'm not going to mention who it is because um, I'm not, uh, not about doing that. So again, this could have been a fluke thing. Could have been their very first time um, having any issues as far as any DOAs. Uh, most likely, I'm not going to press the issue because in the DOA policy um, is basically I would have to pay for shipping. And considering the fact that I lost one, by the time I paid for shipping, because the shipping cost alone that I paid um, just coming from the east side, not that many hours away from where we're at, um, is very, very high. So, um quite an astronomical for the shipping costs. I just 
base it on reviews, based on other people's experiences from the source. I like to support other folks um, in other sources and try new things out. The coloration, everything from photographs and so forth look good, but again, you only can put your trust in what you see. Um, and, uh, you know, ultimately your reputation is based on once the, sh once the fish or the livestock actually get in your hands uh, from that point, you know, uh, that's why I'm very, very critical when it comes to shipping. Um, like I say time and time again, I definitely go above and beyond. Um, if I could, I would ship my own fish <laughs> for somebody and have them ship or package them just because I'm very, very anal when it comes to, uh, comes to shipping. So, um, but yeah, with that being said, these are just your common, uh, electric or electric, your common ju uh, germ blue ram cichlids. Um, and yeah, so I ordered eight of them. Uh, there's going to be a ratio between males and females. The males have um, um, the other ones are, are pretty much uh, at a juvenile size, which I, I knew that. So everything from that standpoint um, is accurate. You know, there's no issues there as far as the size. So it wasn't any misrepresentation on the seller's part um, as far as size and that goes. Um, you know, but uh, with that being said, again, things do happen. Um, but uh, yeah. So I'm just watching their overall breeding behavior right now. I mean, they seem to be bouncing back, which is good. Um, they're grazing around, scavenging around, looking for food. So that's always a good sign. Um, so I'm going to give these guys a little bit and then give them a um, little introduction. I'll target feed them. Uh, and then I'll probably show you guys. So I'll be on here for a while, and I'm not sure who else is streaming tonight. Um, but uh, yeah, my mind hasn't been all with it uh, lately. So, uh, but yeah, with that being said, um, let's get to the chat. Take any of your guys' questions that you might have. Again, I want to do this for you guys to be able to bring you on the journey and be able to show you because there's been a lot of questions that have come up on how to go about breeding. Uh, like the epistogram of microgeophagus strains. And um, I definitely have some tips and tricks that can hopefully help uh, you guys, inspire you guys. They're definitely a awesome, awesome specimen to have uh, in any uh, setup like that, um, you know, for more of your dwarf uh, cichlid species. So they're very, very beautiful. Um, they definitely, as they age and they, they grow, you, you provide the appropriate environments and so forth. Um, they definitely are uh, a wonderful attractant to having like a focal aquarium um, within your uh, your setups. Um, they're they're absolutely uh, stunning. They're one of my favorite, if not my favorite, uh, dwarf cichlid. Um, and I put a lot of time and energy years back when I used to breed these guys, especially with the fry. I think that's where most people get frustrated. Um, I, do, I will not let these guys parent raise um, just due to the fact from a business standpoint, if I want to um, try to get these guys producing. Um, more of this will make sense as I bring video to you guys. I'm not going to say it's going to be in a live stream format because um, it's most likely not going to be. So it will be something that I'll end up editing and bringing to you guys. But I'll have very in-depth and detailed. So there will be lots of things for you guys. Um, try to bring some inspiration your way. Uh, same thing with the uh, the Blue Dream Shrimp and the uh, the Electric Blue Acara. Um, so right now with those three projects, that should uh, keep me busy and keep you guys busy with providing some video content uh, uh, from this from this channel um, for you guys to watch. Um, the other thing I want to mention too is most likely um, this Thursday I will not be uh, putting out a video. Uh, I know one just went out on Monday. Um, I'm hoping soon here I can release the Imperial Tropicals Fish Farm Tour to you guys uh, just due to the fact of confidentiality um, and, and so forth. A lot of that video content, I have hours upon hours of video content uh, that I edited down. So chances are I'll be in a couple of videos. Most of it's already edited. I'm going to still edit a little bit more of that out. i um, got to talk with Mike Drotty, who is the, uh, the VP there. Um, and one of the owners there at uh, Imperial Tropicals, um, but he's just very busy. I've been busy, so we need to 
get together and figure out uh, what's appropriate to, to put out there. So I'm sure you guys can un understand and respect that because there's a lot of things that go behind the scenes, um, you know, that, that uh, they're not going to put out there. They've been around for 50 plus years. Um, one of the longer farms that have been around and there's definitely a lot of like trade seekers and stuff like that. So when you're on a massive scale, um, as they are being a fish farm, there's a lot of, uh, um, a lot of things that go on behind the scenes. Um, so I have a lot of respect uh, for them. Again, I'm not being endorsed or paid for by by any means to to uh, support them, but um, I'll add their link in the description below. So definitely check it out. Um, they offer a lot of different uh, varieties of livestock. Um, they're getting in more stuff all the time. Um, they breed a lot of their own stuff. Um, and uh, I think oftentimes people have the misconception or the uh, uh, sometimes a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to fish farms. But I can guarantee you and promise you from my own personal experience with dealing with them through the years, ordering stuff myself, is they are one of the few fish farms out there that put actually really good quality livestock out there for uh, you know, your common hobbyists and so forth, or even your advanced uh, aquarists. So um, a lot of stuff goes on behind the scenes. I wish that that I could provide more of that goes behind the scenes because I think a lot of people would have more of a uh, appreciation of what a fish farm, especially what those guys do um, and how they really have geared towards the years uh, to provide some excellent specimens to um, to a hobbyist rather than just being you know, wholesale. So fish nerd, hello, all good. Fingers crossed for you, bud. Uh, White is in the house. Uh, Dean H, uh, Susan, hello. Uh, got 20 by filling investigations markets from Opinion World. Um, I wish him luck. Thank you for the shirt. I got it today. No, thank you, Dean. Um, uh, Fishner said me too as many times as I've shipped. I'm reading backwards here, you guys, so just bear with me. Fishner said, I also had some Placos go out to Texas, and those haven't arrived yet either. They only left uh, um, about a half hour ago. Fishner said, I'm dying here. <laughs> so, again, I, I'm, I'm reading backwards, you guys. I don't know. The airport post office is just 20 minutes away. Yep. There's, um, yeah, I've had, that's why when I, and again, I've done tutorials on shipping, um, and there's a lot of things I've done through the years behind the scenes. I wish I would have brought video um, out. Now I wish I would have actually rendered some video and had some in my repertoire where I could have actually saved up, and now would be the optimal time to provide because there's so many things that I wish I would have captured through the years of doing this um that that i could provide uh first-hand experiences and so forth um and you know but i can't can't go back and record something that was never recorded obviously so i wish i could go back in time and do that but unfortunately i can't but uh yeah with that being said any general questions that you guys have again um we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best so Yeah, KG Cichlids Fish Farm Tour would be cool. Yep. Um, they don't open it up to public. Um, you know, I've had people ask as far as, um, you know, can they come and pick up, you know, fish or look at fish here? And I'm just not going to open that door. Um, I would really have to know somebody on a personal level before I would do that. Um, but yeah, so. Same thing with a fish farm. They're not going to typically, that's definitely a, uh, it's a privilege to say the least. So you really have to know somebody and establish a good reputation. I uh, put them on PayPal and use for first uh, Rapashi. Who thinks again? Uh, Tez Judy for it and also Tannins. 
Kristen, I'm assuming I'm probably a little be behind behind here as far as chat goes, but uh, all I heard was Ted Judy, so I give that two thumbs up. If I have more thumbs, I would give it more thumbs up. But yeah, Ted Judy is definitely somebody that uh, I would definitely consider an expert uh, in this in this field for sure. Um, let's see. So if I miss anything, you guys go ahead and put it back down there. It looks like just a lot of um, inside chat going on right now. Um, I'm not going to stay on here too terribly long. Um, but, uh, yeah. So I've been going for about an hour or so. Um, still have a lot more work to do um, here. And... Being Wednesday, like I said, mine really hasn't been all with it lately, so I'm forgetting stuff all the time. So I don't know who all is live streaming tonight. Um, but yeah, definitely go ahead and put it in the chat. You can any of the moderators can go ahead and add a link. I don't mind. Um, so if there's anybody that that's live streaming, uh, just let me know. Closest thing to a fish farm tour is Imperial Tropicals. Well, I guess that is a fish farm tour. Laugh out loud. I'm not. not I don't think I'm following you quite there, KG Cichlids, but a um, lot of Belgiums. So if no questions for me, you guys, um, then I'm just going to end um and wrap the the live stream up been going for about an hour a little bit more um so i'm gonna give it a five minute it's about 5 40 eastern time my time so if you don't have any questions uh for me uh then i'm gonna go ahead and and conclude here at 5 45 so about five or six minutes White says, thanks for the stream. Yep, thank you. Christian uh, said, good luck with the acclimation. Yep, it's ultimately up to them at this point. Fox said, hope you fished you well. Thank you. Raymond said, V Stag, thanks. Yep. Thank you, guys. Imperial does live streams. Sometimes I catch them. Usually on Fridays, they bring you around their facility and give an inside look. Yeah, to a point, KG. I know that they do more on. Uh, Facebook, but um, to a point. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that they're not showing, though. Lots. Um, Dank, so what's up, brother? What's up, Dank? Going to be hopping off here in just a couple minutes. Mine, too, by the way. Only a pair of me and Moss Ball. Okay. Susan said, love you, Jeremy. Love you, too, Susan. Much love to each and every one of you guys. Good night. Thanks, Princess said. No, thank you. All right. Looks like, um, what did you get in today? Y'all have to go back, Dank, because I'm going to be hopping off from here. So um, give it an hour or so. Uh, it should be uploaded here on YouTube. And uh, as far as what I got is the mycogeophagus during blue ram cichlids. So, yeah, I bet there's a lot of left out. Yep. 
Um, all right, you guys. Looks like majority are um, dropping out, knowing that I'm going to be heading off from here. So I want to appreciate each and every one of you guys as always. Uh, have a great rest of your day, and we will talk to you guys on the next one.